Hello everybody, uh, today I'm going to be doing a quick, somewhat thorough demonstration of saltwater electro etching, which is the technique I've been using to produce all of what you see here and a lot more. I've gotten to a point where I feel like I can consistently get good line work and uh, reliable etches from this, so I wanted to share the information of how I've got all my setup running. And if you're part of the Rust Temple, there's now a, a etching tank in the metal shop that anyone can use. And it's so non-toxic that I think that you, you should feel free to use it just from watching this video. Don't feel like you, you know, special training or anything like that. There's really not that much that can go wrong. Now that being said, there are a lot of dangerous things that can happen when you mix electricity uh, with water. You may have heard of people dying in their bathtub or something like that from uh, you know trying to blow dry their hair and then dropping the blow dryer in and then getting shocked to death. Uh, Saltwater electro etching is not dangerous like this but if you're not following the exact directions of this video and being kind of willy-nilly with your electricity a lot of a lot of problems can happen. I'm not going to get that much into the chemistry of it. I think I understand what's going on chemically, but I don't want to deceive anyone or uh, act like I know things I don't know that much about. But I will be including some books and links at the end of the video that will give you more of a scientific chemical understanding of this if you're interested. The simplest way I can describe this process is that it is the same chemical process that's going on when you're car rusts out during the winter from driving on all the salted roads. Uh, it's the same chemical reaction, but it's just sped up using electricity. Maybe I'm wrong, but it seems like a nice simple uh, description that conveys the message. So here is the ludicrously basic diagram for what's going on here. Um, this water is salt water. You want to use kosher salt pure NaCl because any, uh, any salt with additives in it, the additives will uh, mess with the chemical reaction a little bit and I've noticed that the etch won't be as good if you use ionized salt or sea salt or something like that. Kosher salt or pickling salt works the best. Uh, the ratio, I, I really eyeball it almost every single time but um, the ratio is one to four salt to water that seems to work pretty well for me but again I do eyeball it every single time and I haven't noticed it to be a dramatic uh, change in the etching of these plates so the you need a 5 volt power supply uh, anything less than 10 volts will probably work um, the there's some other videos that suggest using a 9 volt battery which is really really just a waste of a 9 volt battery uh, when cell phone chargers are so ubiquitous and every cell phone charger puts out 5 volts. Okay, maybe not everyone. Most USB chargers that charge with micro USB put out 5 volts. So the, the simplest way to, to get this set up on your own would be to get a cell phone charger, cut the end off, strip the wires, and the red wire will be positive 5 volts. And the, uh, the other color wire, sometimes it's white, sometimes it's uh, black or brown that'll usually be negative um, so you attach the positive the red wire onto the plate that you want to etch um, first you're gonna want a, a steel plate a stainless steel plate or a brass plate uh, and get all the rust off of it and then put a layer of spray paint or um, nail polish I've noticed those to work pretty well enamel spray paint on there and it'll look kind of like this when you when you have a uh, etching that's ready to be done. I did a layer of spray paint and then I used a scribe like this to just etch away the top layer of the spray paint. And then when we put it in the tank and attach five volts to it and have the other plate on the other side, the reaction will only eat away at the exposed parts of this plate. And yeah, that's how I did all of these just a layer of automotive enamel and then I lightly etched out the design and then in the tank get it to make a nice etch on there. 
great. I'll take you to the tank. Oh, so the positive side goes on to the piece that you want to etch, and then the negative side goes on to a piece of stainless steel. I've noticed stainless steel works better just because it doesn't rust, but you can also use mild steel on there. All right, let's go to the uh, tank. So we're in the metal shop of the Rust Temple. Here we have the basic electro etching setup. Water looks a little bit murky. I just filled this with some tap water. The murkiness is just from the leftover rusts. That is the power supply that I made uh, out of an old Dell power supply. You should use a cell phone charger though, unless you have one of these power supplies on you and know how to work with it. Cell phone charger is the easiest way to get, uh, get yourself up and running with this. This is a piece of perforated stainless steel. That's what we're gonna be using on the negative side of this whole uh, setup. And then here again, this is the little design that I've etched out, just scratched out on the surface of this painted piece of stainless steel. I like to use Scotch-Brite a lot to clean up the metals. So I'll be doing two etches, the first of which is gonna be the standard technique that I've been using most often, which is with automotive enamel on top of mild steel. Let me set up the camera so we can get to this. Here we are, a better view of the tank and everything. So, first things first, you're gonna wanna connect the negative side to your piece of perforated stainless steel. Uh, I've got my coloring a little bit not intuitive, but if you look here at my power supply, you've got uh, red, yellow, and two black uh, banana jacks. The black ones are negative, and the red or yellow ones are positive. Red is 5 volts, yellow is 12 volts. I'll write it on there so you know. So I'm taking this brown wire and I'm plugging it into the negative banana jack hole, and I am clipping it onto the piece of perforated stainless steel. I'm not going to go into why it's better to have perforated stainless steel than the other stainless steel because of lack of time, but I've noticed it to give a cleaner etch, and it was a very experienced uh, person who gave me this bit of information. Putting that in the tank, and then we take the positive, 5 volts on that red banana jack and I'm going to clip it onto the piece that I want to etch and then dunk it into the tank there. Now, I told you 1 to 4 ratio, but I'm just going to eyeball the amount of salt that goes in there. I really have not noticed it to make much of a difference. I'm stirring it in. I'm going to wait until the bath the salt has completely gone into the solution. Maybe it'll take a second. It's mostly settled now. You can see the piece with the automotive enamel on it and the scratchings on it connected to the positive side and the negative side connected to the piece of perforated stainless steel. Don't worry if you hook it up wrong because it will be very easy to tell that you've hooked it up wrong. It will be very easy to fix. So now I'm going to turn on the power supply, make sure it's plugged in there. I'm turning it on, a yellow, uh, green light goes on, and if you look at the etching bath, immediately there's a lot of activity on that piece of perforated stainless steel. Uh, and what that is is hydrogen bubbles coming off of the H2O molecule and um, off-gassing. So there's one chemical reaction going on on this side, which produces hydrogen gas, and there's another chemical reaction going on on this side, which is producing basically rust and then maybe some unintended molecules.
because I'm using tap water and not pure water. And now we just set the uh, set the old alarm for 10 minutes. So at uh, 1525, we'll check on it and see how it worked. This is what it looks like after uh, almost uh, 10 minutes worth of etching. The uh, tank turns into this nice nasty sludge that is almost entirely different iron oxides, um, different rust molecules, or yeah, rust molecules. And anyway, whatever, there's rust in there and there's water. Let's look at it from the side. The reaction's still going on. Uh, I've noticed that the further you go past 10 minutes, the more uh, unpredictable the etch tends to be. So we're gonna shut off the power supply. The bubbles should stop going. It's also worth noting that you could put your hands in this at any time and not really be at a risk of a shock or anything like that. But you know, it's just good to keep your hands clean. You get it extremely dirty from putting it in there. And down here, this is the uh, tank of spent etching fluid. And if you look in it, you'll see that the rust has settled all the way to the bottom. It's like a murky black color. And then there is perfectly clear uh, etching solution there that you can actually just pour off and reuse in another tank. So uh, it's useful to keep this around and then eventually when you want to dispose of the iron, you can just take out all of the water in there and then let the rest of the water evaporate and then you can just throw out the leftover iron chunks or I don't know, maybe you could sell it for scrap metal. So, in the tank up there. Oh yeah, we definitely got some uh, some etching there. Um, I'm just gonna dump dump this out into the tank, clean these off, and then I'll I'll show you what the uh, end result was. And there it is, all cleaned up. A little uh, etch of a random person's face creature's face or something I don't know this is just a example etch I didn't even clean off all the paint but I think that you get the idea uh, let me know if you have any questions and yeah you should be all set up and ready to go uh, etching using this etching tank at the rust temple just remember to toss out the spent etching fluid, the electrolyte. Put that away underneath the work match. Great, 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 great. I hope this is helpful. Have a good rest of your day. And just remember, Facebook doesn't like you, YouTube doesn't like you, Instagram doesn't like you, Twitter doesn't like you. They're just trying to make a lot of money off of your personal data. Have a great rest of your day, guys. Goodbye.